Welcome back to Becoming an Elite Advisor podcast. I'm Sten Morgan here with Andy Traub. Hey, man. How are you today? I'm good, man. This uh, is a uh, spoiler alert. We filmed this uh, podcast the same day as the last one. Yeah. The yeah Confidence I, part two. I, I encourage people to maybe go to our YouTube channel for this alone. <laughs> uh, my assistant pointed this out to me. <laughs> she says, Andy, look at these two screenshots, you know, or the thumbnail in the video on YouTube. And I go, yeah. I mean, they look exactly the same. Like, my arm was the same. I was wearing the same shirt. And she's like, you need to wear different shirts. I go, why? <laughs> Those are from the same day. She said, no, they're from different weeks. And like, I, we had just, we, our rhythm was like same shirt, same. And I was like, yeah, we got to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. But uh, well, I have uh, three pairs of the same jeans because they, they're long enough. Yeah. And then I got like eight pairs, different color of the same polo shirt. Uh, and it's yeah. either that or a suit. So we're doing the you're doing the Zuckerberg <laughs> thing, right? Where it's all oh, he's doing the Sten thing. Is that? Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. don't like thinking about what I'm wearing too much. So, yeah. I I'm I'm on board with that, but okay. it it is comical that if you look at it, it's we really look like we never change clothes. I promise we, <laughs> we do. never leave the office. That's right. We we definitely do. <laughs> Stan, it, this is a topic that deserves two episodes. So this is our second episode on it. I think the the last episode we sort of set the stage for an understanding of the importance of confidence. But true to who we are, we want to be really practical in our teaching. And so today we're going to talk about confidence busters and confidence builders. The good news is we have a lot more builders than busters. So I'm just going to uh, start with you and we're going to go right into the busters um, and dig into what these are. We've just got three of them. But the first one is, um, and it's kind of confusing to me, bad reps. What aren't all reps good reps then? You know, it's a good it, question, Andy. Thank um, you, because I don't know the answer. I'm not being rhetorical. I really don't. I really thought all reps were good. So what, what's a bad rep? Within our business, and I look back in my story, is that when I worked in a couple offices, like I didn't know enough yet to know which office I was working for. It was kind of the one I was introduced to and then I happened to interview with and that happened to say I could work there. Uh-huh. But I had no selection of any of the advisors in that office. So the people I was around I just happened upon. I didn't know were they top producers? How did they run their business? Were they just annuity salespeople? Were they just out for their own good? You know, which I don't think is true for most people, but I had no idea. And so if you just happen upon advisors and you start learning from them, whether it's joint work or you're shadowing them or even just observing them, yeah, I would also argue there's something that radiates about if you're just around certain kind of people, you will start to emulate them. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, we're all immune to that. That's no, right. it, it, I will say this to, 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 sort of clarify that point a little bit more Um, and I'll just moment of disclosure here when I'm around people who curse I suddenly get a little loose with the lips (laughs) you know what I'm saying and for people who never curse I'm like I'm not gonna be the guy that you know what I mean Um, and so it's not that you're gonna go exactly to where they are but those people give you permission one way or the other Mm -hmm. I'm either gonna lift you up or I'm gonna kind of bring you down culture is real it can be difficult to measure attitude is real it can be difficult to measure Mm -hmm. right um and, but but this so you're saying the bad reps are because you could be in an environment where you're doing it wrong but you don't know because you don't have anything to compare it to yeah and i think you have to decide what kind of advisor you want to be so b- bad reps might be a strong word if you know i started in the insurance business and the reps were hey call everybody you know try to get in front of them and you know try to s- sell them we were based off of like how many lives could we get in a household how many policies can you sell so get the mom get the dad get the kids like and that's all I knew at the time. In hindsight, those were not good reps. Like I was creating habits. I didn't really even give me, know. Give me clarity then because I think someone's going to go, dude, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> you know, like I walked out with 11 things instead of two. Yep. Why Why is it a bad rep? Like wh- wh- why is that a bad methodology? Knowing what I know now and I think what was inside of me then, the advisor I wanted to be mm-hmm. was not the one that sold insurance to every person I met and was then known as the insurance salesman. We use insurance products now, but more as like a tool or a solution to a problem that we solve. Right. Like now, if you think about legacy or at least what people tell clients, it's like, oh, you have a problem that you don't know how to solve. You should call those guys. They could help you. That's the the kind of practice I wanted to have. So I had to break habits I built through what I would call bad reps, whether that's I'm out here just selling product. It's not doing harm, but that's just what I am as a salesperson versus, no, I want reps as a problem-solving creative advisor. You said this today on our community call for EAN about, and it's a very common phrase, but you know, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think about that versus like the multi-tool. You know, it's like if you're a multi-tool, you could be, I can help you with a lot of different things. Yep. And, And it's not that, 
sometimes I think it's not the hammer's fault. It's just it's just a hammer, but it's not very diverse. It's not like you know I need help with this. Here's a hammer. That's right. <laughs> like I, that's all I know how to do. And so I, the hard part is some sometimes people are willfully ignorant, and sometimes people are just I, they don't know. Yeah, they I didn't know. Just I hadn't been exposed to many practices. I just did what I thought everybody was doing in that space, and and so I, you want to have grace on that. But the challenge still lies on that advisor to be aware of their blind spots and realize like, oh, there's other ways to be in this business. Like there's advisors that what they do is sell insurance and they know it and they do it really well. Good for them. There's advisors that all they do is manage money. So don't talk to them about anybody else. And that's fine. And then there are uh, financial planners, people that solve problems that have access to all the same products. Yeah. But I see those products as the tools to solve the problem, but the problem still needs to be solved. Yeah. And the good news is, is there's usually more than one way to solve a problem. And if you're a hammer, that's not true because you're like, <laughs> uh, you hit it really hard. Swing harder. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. The next confidence buster, uh, lack of belief in product. And that could be whether it is a product on the shelf. So mm-hmm. when I was in the insurance space, if I'm like, man, they, they're telling me I got five things to work with and I don't believe in any of them, that that could crush you. Like the, to get up out of bed each morning and be like, man, the stuff I'm selling, I don't really believe in, but is I that, need to. Is that because... Um, Man, if they ask anybody else, they're going to find it cheaper? Or is it like, what about the product? Should people go, I mean, don't compromise on that. I mean, price is one factor, but a lot of times if it's better and you know it's better, then price shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Because you know for the right person, it's going to be a good fit. At its core, and for a lot of advisors we coach, we tell them you are the product. And so if you don't believe in yourself, like obviously that crushes your confidence. Because like put me in a situation and I'm uh, – I, I might as well convince this person to go somewhere else because I don't think I'm the best option for them. <laughs> right, right, right. And even if listen, you don't I say want it, you to do what's best it. for you, so it's leave <laughs> now. All right, you know, yeah, that, that's that's bad. And the last buster we'll talk about real quick is fear. I think fear of rejection, fear of I'm going to be exposed for not being as good as I want them to think I am. That fear, as it's connected to lack of preparation or limiting beliefs, that can compound to your detriment if you let it run. I also think there's a fear of there. there's there's no more customers. There's no more clients. Mm-hmm. There's that fear of, man, if I don't get them, like what's, what's going to happen? Yeah. It, it's not believing that, man, maybe they're not the right person for you. And if they say no, you know, go find someone else. I literally tell him, my son this yesterday about, oh, I know, because he had a breakup. We talked about this. Oh, you're gonna. He's, this is gonna live now forever. I know. That's, I just realized I talk about. But we're, that's, that's all we're gonna talk about. But I said to him, I said, man, I remember when we put an offer on our first house, and, I, and then we went to dinner, and I literally it was the first time in my life I couldn't eat because I was like, I can't eat right now. This is like I'm. I thought I was hungry. Like, waiting for them because I was respond. so I was so worried, but I'd never had that feeling. Yeah. And we didn't get the house, and my realtor said, Andy there are other houses. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, no, there aren't. But the I next day where I was like, living in there. Yeah. But the next day it's like, no, there's other houses. And I was like, oh, there are. And then we found one and it was great. And we lived there and we had a wonderful life. Yeah. And it's this idea that like, there are no other clients. Like, no, there's other clients. Right. But that fear, that scarcity of, um, of again, not believing in yourself, but also that there's no more. Like you have to have that abundance mentality of maybe now's not the right time to work with me. No. Maybe later, maybe you should work with someone else because, I don't want to work with you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which is, yeah, which is totally fine. So let's move on to the confidence builders because hopefully from our last episode and even the kind of the bonus questions at the end that you've been kind of able to reveal yourself and even rank yourself one to 10. Where do I think I am? And it's like, you know, if we're all honest, we shouldn't be a 10, probably shouldn't be a nine. But you may say, you know, if I'm really honest with myself, I'm a four. Yeah. There are, there, are, my lack of confidence is holding me back that I need to build that up. Yep. First one we'll talk about is growing your knowledge. How how specifically, because I think there's this belief, like, well, I, I do CE, right? <laughs> I do my CE. You just laugh so big. I love CE. I wish you could see a smile on YouTube. If it's you haven't, good, go to this is. part. Uh, it's going to be about 10 minutes into the episode where yes, Sen's, like, good. laughs at me about CEs. So, I so, just envisioned how most advisors take CE, and it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's I maybe know. not really retained. So that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about. Uh, so number one, get your CE. Number two, <laughs> right. no. Uh, if we need to do CEs by law. But yes, but yeah. what do you mean? like And, and specifically, how does that help? Because I think there's this thing where you get in this rhythm of I'm good at selling, mm-hmm. I'm doing okay, I've got a decent income, like I'm good on the knowledge front. Like, what does it look like to gain knowledge so that you continue to build up your confidence, especially as maybe you've had this, some success? I had to believe early in my career, like, because I, I didn't have age on my side, uh, didn't own very nice suits, 
I drove an old Nissan Altima, so I didn't roll up into meetings given the yeah. feeling I've been doing this for the a long Mercedes time. The Mercedes vibe, yeah. So I was like, man, if, if there's a list of things to convey confidence and experience and success to your clients, <laughs> like I'm not checking most of them. And yeah. I was 24. So the only thing as I thought through and challenged myself in this lack of confidence and fear was, I bet if I was that good at my job, I bet mm. if I just knew more things there, I could convert more clients. That even if somebody was 50 years old looking at a 25 year old and I showed them in real time strategies to save them money, yeah, I bet more of them would become a client than if I just went in and said, hey, do you like, like me more than the other advisor? Yeah. And so I also compared that to like other jobs. Like, do you think if somebody needs a heart surgery and the best heart surgeon in the country happens to be 30 years old, do you think that they're like... Don't care. I, yeah, I don't care. Cut me open, bro. Yeah. Have at the it. the best attorney defending right. your grandma from going to jail yeah. for unpaid parking tickets. You wouldn't care if, how old they were. If they were that good and right. that was the highest probability of success that they knew of, you would hire them. Yeah. So I had to internalize that and say, okay, I'm going to get my CFP before I, love I can that. even tell anybody about it. I'm going to get the CHFC right after that. I'm going to go to conferences. Uh, I'm going to learn about social security. Like, I'm going to start infusing myself with knowledge so that when I'm in a position... I don't want to miss an opportunity if somebody asks me a question to add value in the moment yeah. confidently. So that brings up the, the, this point, which is I, I do want us to talk about our how to charge for your advice program because we have people who take the program and say, I'm not allowed to charge. Actually, the call I just got off of, mm -hmm. he said, by the way, I just found out, I just got the approval that I can charge for my advice. Nice. He was waiting for approval Game from changer. his company. And I was like, oh, that helps. Yeah. Now the question is how much will they let him charge? But that's a, Right, that's but the cool thing is he bought the program Two weeks. This is our two-week kind of check-in after he bought the program, kind of check-in after two weeks. And the thing is, he bought the program, How to Charge Your Advice, before he could charge for his advice because he's like, I want to be ready. Good for him. Which is, which is, again, it's like, when's the time to be ready, like, to prepare before you need it? That's right. Right? So that's a part of, if, if you want to check out How to Charge for Your Advice program, uh, we believe that's part of building your confidence. And, you know, that we've, we've never had anyone say, I, I, you know, this isn't, this doesn't work. Yeah. If you do it, it works. And it's, and he's like, man, it's, it's deeper than I thought it was going to be. It's more applicable than I thought it was going to be. It's got more content than I thought. If you want to level up, then, you know, get the shortcut. It took 10, five, six years. Mm -hmm. You can learn it in a month. Yeah. And you want things that'll exponentially impact your confidence. Like there's things you can do slowly over time, but I know we tell our advisors, we don't want to take the 10 year path that the industry maybe lays out in front of us. Like yeah. give me the three year path. And the three year one is harder. Uh, you have to invest more in yourself. Like it's a different path and there's a reason fewer people take it. Right. But when you think about our how to charge for your advice program, when I talk to an advisor before and after that, I can just see it in their face that they've gone from being nervous to excited. Yeah. And uh, what's changed is they have a process. They now see, oh, this is what's possible. This is what he said to me today. He said, I, he said I'm just having a hard time. It's a great call. This is a 20 minute call. I'm just having a hard time because I've just been giving this away for free. And I shared this analogy. And it's funny. I totally aged myself because I said, you ever heard of Jewel? And he's like, no. And I'm like, God, I'm old. <laughs> anyway, there's a great story about Jewel, who's this singer. Do you know who Jewel is? Oh, I know who Jewel is. Okay, good. All right, good. I was like, oh, God, how old am I? But there's this great st story. And I think she tells it on Joe Rogan's uh, show that she turned down a million-dollar uh, record deal. And she was homeless. But she knew that it wasn't structured right for her, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I brought up the Jewel with this with this client who's also a member of EAN is, is he said man I just I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around like I, I've been doing it for free and I'm supposed to charge for it mm -hmm. I said I said you gotta listen to this interview with Jewel sometime but she talks about how she was playing on the street and then she became friends with this coffee shop owner who was getting ready to close and she said just stay open for two more months and I'll bring you customers so during the day she would play for free right mm -hmm. see the, the comparison she, she would do it for free on the street and she said come Thursdays to the salty goat coffee shop on 12th and whatever and then you would pay, right? And so I said, are you hearing what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, you do some for free and then you get people to come pay, right? And that's what you teach people. Like, mm -hmm. it's the same stuff, but it's more organized. It's yeah. more specific. You know, you put more into it. And so, yeah, you will get more confidence mm -hmm. if you can say, yeah, I've gone to this program so I know how to give enough away for free yep. that they feel like this person knows what they're talking about. They got the knowledge like yep. you talked about. But then, yes, you're going to you're gonna charge for it. Yeah, and then even you think about beyond, okay, I take a course and my confidence goes from one to five. Right. And then you know, due to popular demand, we're going to be running a live event in January. Yeah. And we have advisors saying, man, if I took a course and now all of a sudden I'm going from charging zero to $3,000 a client, whatever it is, 
and I can be in a room with you guys for two days. Yeah. It's that kind of stuff where you're like, that's not going to, you know, that's not a one plus one. That's a, like a one times 10 yeah. type of focus to build that confidence. Yeah. So let's talk about um, successful reps. We talked about, uh, you know, unhealthy reps. Mm-hmm. What, what are positive reps and how can they help you? And, and I, I would think of these like, I don't, did you know this about, maybe we talked about this before, but on the Richter scale, like two is twice as bad as three and three is twice as bad as two That's and right. four. Like, it's not like, oh, it's a little bit worse, right? Yeah, yeah, right. It's a lot worse, right? Yeah. And I think those are the kind of things like if you get successful reps, those are the things they don't like go, oh, it's 2% better. No, like it'll double you in a, in a year. You know what I mean? I think even like in sports, you know, I mean, I know you coach a lot of baseball. It's like if you can create bad habits by trying the wrong way. Right. So you need to be so aware of who's teaching me this. Yeah. Is this the right way? Because I don't want to waste all that practice time. Yeah. And once you're aware of like, I have a good basketball coach, I'm going to do what he says and I'm going to keep doing it over and over and over again. Right. Because like anything, if you do it enough times, it becomes second nature. Yeah. I'll do things in meetings now that I'll have another advisor in the room with me or I had some advisors the other day call me from a different firm. This happens more than you think and say, hey, would you help me with a client? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll do that at times if they're an EAN member or it's a, it's a good opportunity. But they watched me on a Zoom oh, I mean, you told me, yeah. in their yeah. office work with three of their clients on the phone. You said they just sat there most of the time. Yeah, and they because that's they asked. They're like, we just want the rep. We want to see it. And so, like again, that mindset of an advisor is just the people that think that way. I'm just like, good for you that you're absolutely like, just watching another advisor do it. Even if I get none of the compensation, yeah, I just want to see you do what you do. And the client said, we've never had a call like that. It was the first call that we ended, and we didn't feel like we had to call somebody else to figure out what that person just told us. <laughs> oh my gosh. And to me, it was like I was just having a conversation, but to them, their feedback was like, that was awesome. So the successful rep, and I, and I want to echo what you said, and I learned this last year, I think, this this saying, it was two years ago. Uh, it was at um, a Dr. Axe event, okay. uh, with this, those guys, um, and, it, and it was this copywriter, and he said, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Mm. You can practice the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, God, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that saying is wrong. Yeah. You can practice the wrong thing again and again and again and again, and then, and then you do it wrong again and again. Yeah. Breaking, so a hard, breaking a bad habit is hard. Yes. <laughs> so, I, so, so I love the idea of pra- get good reps in. That's right. Good reps. Um, I also like the idea of getting some no's. Yeah. I think that we teach our uh, – I know that we teach our, um, our folks like, hey, no one's ever said no to my planning fee. Okay, so what is that? Then maybe you should raise it, yeah, right? That's right. right. That's what that's what we generally say. And they go, I know I should raise it because I've never gotten a no. And sometimes you want to go towards no's because that, that causes you to push yourself. Yeah. And you will be surprised at the outcome of that. Mm-hmm. Quick story, there's a gentleman who wrote a book about trying to go get no's. He tried to get 100 no's at these mm-hmm. different things. And he was surprised because people kept saying yes. Like <laughs> one is he would just knock on people's doors and ask them to play soccer with him. And he was a grown man, right? Grown <laughs> man, like dressed in a soccer uniform, like soccer ball. And people were like, sure. And he was so, because he thought it was just, it was a challenge to himself because he was very, very introverted. Yeah. Um, and he's like, what's surprising is I got my nose, but he's like, you'd be surprised what people say yes to. Yeah. Not in taking advantage of them, but it's just to push yourself. Yeah, that's good. Right? And part of it, once you get a no, you then have to self-reflect and say, why did that person say no? And either could I have communicated something clear? Yeah. Was my solution not appropriate? And sometimes it's like, because it wasn't a good fit, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. So no's get, kind of force you into self-reflection too. Another successful rep means you're getting paid for the first time. I mean, there's that feeling of like, okay, this is real. How do you know it's real? Because they paid you for it. Yeah. It's like, it truly does have value. And that's where we really try to get the advisors we work with. They're like, well, maybe I should. It's like, just do it. Yeah. Like a uh, thousand. Okay, fine. Do it for a thousand. Never do it for a thousand again, but like yeah. just get a yes, get a check and then Mine was grow from for the first one. And I was like, there's no way they're going to say yes. Like that level of confidence <laughs> compared now to where we know what to be true right uh, yeah it's it's a game changer another big confidence builder is the team you have around you or borrowing confidence you talk about joint work I, I if you've been in the business for four minutes you've heard about joint work what is good joint work and how does that build you up maybe what would be bad joint work i'm thankful and and over time it ended up not being a great thing but when i got into the business in nashville was able to work with another senior advisor for a couple of years the business, the practice itself wasn't what I wanted, and that's part of the reason I left. Morally, maybe wasn't where I wanted to be. But the fact that I got exposed to a lot of stuff, like what does it look like to run a practice? How do you talk to clients? Like I'm thankful for that opportunity because 
at 23, I would not have met that many clients that fast on my own. Mm. But because I was part of a team that okay. had a good reputation, I got to sit in on a lot of meetings. And whenever I met a prospect out in town, I was not inviting them as much to meet with Sten by himself yeah. as I was to saying, hey, come meet with me and my team. And that was an easy ask because I knew what they were capable of. Where if I was out there saying, hey, all you, all you get is me, I, I would have been a much different posture. So you're going to get this, you're going to be in front of more people. It reminds me of almost like people watching where it's like, I'm just going to, it's like studying tape. Right, where you get to you get to be a part, but you get to be a part of more games, right? You yeah. get to be a part of more, and and you'll learn from that. Yeah, I mean, you're, I'm sure you know any level of athletic competition. I remember when I was you go from middle school to high school, like, oh, this feels more intense, and then you get yeah. to college, you're like this just feels faster. Yeah, you just need to be in it until yeah. you're like, oh, this game, like I've adjusted to the yeah. pace of this. That's a great, that's a great example. Um, the last one is really specifically. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Let's go back to the COIs. Hmm. Um, you know, the other part of, cause this is something we teach and it's actually surprisingly uh, most advisors are like, no, I don't really have a good COI network at all. Yeah. I mean, folks who enter our programs, that's one of the first things we say, you gotta go get a team. Like you, you, you you're going to be able to serve a lot more people and save yourself a lot. You're going to be able to say yes to a lot more people. If yes, I can help with that. Yep. If you go get a COI. So a big confidence builder is to have COI partners. Mm -hmm. And again, for those maybe that jump forward to episode 37 or whatever this is like, Tell, tell folks how you teach people to approach COIs versus the, the industry yep. is generally, hey, let me buy your lunch. And then, hey, could you send me clients? Like yep. that's normally the COI relationship yep. of you're a lawyer. If you ever meet someone that I could serve, you know, mm -hmm. you know, in exchange for that hamburger, you know, send me clients. Is that? It is. And you can become friends with them eventually over time. But the that relationship was essentially established on, hey, I expect you to look for opportunities for me. And maybe every once in a while, I'll send somebody your way. Right. Instead of the way we approach it is like, even if I never refer to you and you never refer to me, I need a relationship here of trust because I'm going to need to ask you questions. So when I run across a client that has a tax issue, I can call my three tax attorney people. Some I've become friends with. Some there's just a professional relationship where mm -hmm. they also call me with questions. And I can get that solution much faster. The client probably couldn't get a hold of that attorney because they're really good. Uh, the client would have to pay that mm -hmm. attorney for the same question. But right. now be, through us, our COI network brings this force to bear for our clients that if a client says, hey, I have these four issues, I'm like, I know the exact professional that knows each one of those really specifically. Right. It makes me even that much more confident. I'm like, you're paying me this fee because we're going to solve these problems for you. And the good news is I don't have to have all the answers. I just have to know where to go find it. Yeah. I go back to this you know, comparison. I remember as a kid walking into the Indianapolis Public Library downtown. It's this massive, massive, massive building. And right, you know, the very first desk in there is these super incredibly smart, friendly librarians. Because this, this place is, you know, 100,000 square feet <laughs> yeah. and huge pillars and it's four stories. And I'm like, I'm just lost. But like that person, that the librarian... Did they know everything in all the books? No, but they're like, oh, you need to know this? Go to this section. And it like, mm -hmm. but who did you, you needed a guide. And how much right? time did they just save you? And oh, I mean, it's, it's like, forget it, forget it, <laughs> you know? And so be that guide for people. Is there, and so is there value in that? Like, absolutely. And, and it's, yeah. I didn't, they didn't have to write the books, is my point, right? They didn't, but they know how to get to the solution. Mm -hmm. And I think that the more advisors, if you could look at yourself and say, I am part of the solution, but I don't have to be the solution, mm -hmm. but they're not going to get to the solution without me. Yeah. That is valuable. That's right. Um, Last one we'll dive into yeah. is just kind of belief in product, um, meaning you need to believe in, say it's the product on your shelf. Say you're in the insurance or investment space. If you have a lack of belief in your product, like that should turn something up in you. Yeah. Either you need to understand the product better because you don't. So ask more questions. The the path is not always this thing's bad. It's I'm going to I'm going to be curious about this and see if I fully understand it first. Mm -hmm. Or you need to switch up whatever product you're bringing to the table. For me, being a young advisor, I said, "Okay, I can go toe to toe with these Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley or Raymond James advisors and just tell clients my investments are better than your theirs based on these forms I'm showing you." Uh -huh. Which again wasn't very compelling to a lot of clients. Or, hey, this insurance product is better because this firm has paid a dividend for 99 years. That one's only paid for 98 years. Like, <laughs> that stuff wasn't compelling. Yeah. For me, when I started believing in that, like, you need me on your team, whatever the solution or the product is, we'll figure that out together. But by me having, by me being on the team, your outcome is going to be that much better. 
I had to shift from trying to believe in these products that I didn't even create to like, no, I'm the product. Therefore, my confidence is really high. Right. And what I have to bring to the table. And that's a fundamental shift. And we understand that. And it can take some time. You know, we work with advisors and it's not like from one week, you know, no. And the other, yes, it, it takes a shift. But it's all these things of putting the systems in place and getting your pricing and, and believing that you are the product and uh, that that you don't have to solve everything. I mean, it's a it's a transition. But a confidence mm-hmm. builder is that you have to at some point believe that I have conviction in this product and I understand it. Yep. And sometimes you are the product, Yeah. right? Because I didn't have confidence to tell them, hey, this 10 year term from Penn Mutual, Mass Mutual, Gar- like was any better? Because I knew there, there's a little difference, but not a big enough one. And so when you can tell somebody like, I believe so much in this idea that whether you do it with me or someone else, right. this is the right thing. That the, the posture you have, the teaching posture, it's so much different than like, I need to make sure that you think this is the only way. And I have to come up with every little reason why this one's slightly better. And if it's not, I'm not going to talk about that stuff. Like mm. that is the corner that a lot of advisors are pushed into. Really? Where they, they know either I'm staying ignorant on purpose because I don't want to know the answer or this is all I know. So I'm just going to go for it. But to find yourself in a place where you're like, just me being in the room with you is valuable. Whatever the outcome is, I want you to have this idea. It would make sense then that a lot of advisors feel scared um, inadequate because if you're just comparing it on a cost basis, I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever had this happen where someone came back like, you know, I shopped it and I found it $2 cheaper. And you're like, okay, you're okay. I spent four hours with you, but because you found it for whatever cheaper, you know, yeah. term, whatever it's like, we're okay, cool. Like if that's it, yeah. then y- yeah, you're going to lose, yeah. you know, there has to be more to that. Yeah. For you to have a yeah, to have absence confidence. of value, price is an issue, and yeah. for our clients, price is an issue because for the right client, the value is you know 10x yeah. or more what they can be there, and that's where our, you know your confidence will get boosted over time. Awesome. So I, I want to challenge everybody listening: be super aware of where your confidence lies, and and again, be brutally honest. Maybe ask somebody: Is this a blind spot for me? And if it is, and it, it is for all of us. Try to focus on some things that are going to build that confidence in the next week or two. Like have a plan together to do that. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. You know that you need to do things that build your confidence. So we encourage you to take inventory of the topics that we talked about today. Growing your knowledge, getting successful reps, getting around great team members, and having conviction about your products. And you need to work on them. And we want to help you grow in your confidence. And that's why we produce this show for you and why we created our How to Charge for Your Advice program and our Lead Advisor Network community. There's also still time to register for our How to Charge Live event happening in January of 2023 at our offices just south of Nashville. So go see if that's something that you think can help you grow in your confidence. You can find out more about that at stenmorgan.com slash how to live. That's stenmorgan.com slash how to live. And hey, one more thing, if you're still listening, can you take just a minute to leave a review of our show on Apple Podcasts app or give us some stars in the Spotify app? You've probably heard us ask you that before. Uh, Most of you haven't done it. Uh, We still like you, but it really would be a great help if you could just take a minute to leave a review or leave us some stars on whatever app you're listening to. It, It helps other people find out about the show and it tells Apple and Spotify that we're worth listening to and and they'll promote us in return. So keep up the great work, my friend. And on behalf of Stan and myself, we appreciate you listening.